There are a number of other uh, concepts about the heart that we still need to master. Um, we will be discussing the way blood pressure is regulated uh, by your body and why keeping blood pressure within the normal limits is so important. As, as we start to think about that, um, let me start with just an overview that your body has got three major mechanisms for controlling your blood pressure. Uh, the first mechanism for controlling blood pressure is the one that we're going to be starting with, which is something called cardiac output. Cardiac output is how much blood per minute does your heart uh, pump? Yeah, how much blood per minute does your heart pump? If your heart is, is putting out very little blood per minute, your blood, all other things being equal, your blood pressure will be lower. And when your heart is putting out more blood per minute, all other things being equal, your blood pressure will be higher. You can always remember that lower cardiac output equals low blood pressure because when someone's heart stops, they've got no blood pressure. So no cardiac output equals no blood pressure. Cardiac output is, con is controlled uh, partly by controlling the strength of heart contractions, but also controlling your heart rate. Those are the two things that go into uh, cardiac output. Um, the second thing that gets regulated to control blood pressure is how much blood a person has, the volume of blood. Now, uh, when you're thinking about blood, since we just had blood lectures, you might be thinking about the number of red blood cells. And that's actually not what's getting regulated moment by moment by your body. The blood volume that we're talking about, yes, there are red blood cells in it, but it is largely the amount of plasma that is there. And having more or less plasma, that's actually controlled primarily by your kidneys. So we're going to be talking about uh, how the kidney does this a little bit in this set of lectures and then more when we get to the kidney. The third parameter that is modulated by the body in order to control your blood pressure is something that in general is called vascular resistance. Now, vascular resistance has got three sub parameters. We are going to be focusing on just one, how, how small or how big the blood vessel diameter is. If we cut across your blood vessels, your blood vessels are usually kind of somewhere in the middle of these two sizes. But if the body wants to raise your blood pressure, it can cause the smooth muscle that wraps around your blood vessels to really constrict, and that will raise your blood pressure. On the other hand, if there is a command to dilate all your blood vessels, then that will cause your blood pressure to drop. Let's start by talking about cardiac output. Cardiac output. Uh, cardiac output is how many milliliters of blood one ventricle of your heart can pump out in a minute. That's cardiac output. That's its definition. And we would like to know that. Why? Because that's why we have a heart. We have a heart so that it can pump blood. How well does your heart work it really isn't your ECG. Yeah, we look at that. That'll tell us a lot of stuff about the heart, but actually you can have a normal ECG and it is not managing to pump any blood at all. So how do we know how well your heart works? Well, if this were a pump pumping in my fountain in the backyard, what I might do is just detach the fountain and just collect the volume of water that the pump could pump out in a minute. And then I would know that's how much water my pump can pump and that's how well my pump is working. But if we did that with a person, we might like chop off their head and collect how much blood comes out, that would be very uncomfortable. So we don't do that. What we do is this. Look at, look at how happy this guy looks. He loves his job. Um, this test is called echocardiography or cardiac ultrasound. By the way, this profession of testing people's hearts 
is one of the subcategories of being an ultrasound technician. Ultrasound technicians can work in looking at uh, babies uh, inside of their mamas, or some ultrasound technicians will look at people's livers or intestines or kidneys and sometimes heart. Uh, this is a separate profession from being a nurse. So if you think you'd like to work in medicine, but you're not sure nursing or PA school is for you, you might think about ultrasound technician. So we're gonna talk about how the use of ultrasound will let us see how much blood the heart is pumping per minute. This is the kind of image uh, that is created when you do cardiac ultrasound. Yeah, I put too much detail on here, but let me just run you past it. First of all, these images, they're always upside down. I don't know why, they just are. All right, so this is the apex of your heart. Here is the part of the ventricle that has the bicuspid valve or the tricuspid valve. And what cardiac ultrasound can determine is how much blood is inside of the ventricle. This is how much blood is inside of the ventricle right before the ventricle starts to push out blood. In other words, this is how much blood is in the ventricle when the ventricle is full and just about ready to push out its blood. Then the uh, ultrasound tech is going to measure, okay, the ventricles just finished contracting, how much blood was left behind? So I've got a link here, it's on the uh, PowerPoint slides, so you can copy and paste it and look at that over in Wikipedia. So we're going to be talking about the way this uh, kind of technology allows us to evaluate how well your patient's heart is working. So we will start with an analogy, don't we always? Um, I'm losing it, I've been locked up too long, and so I have decided to splash water on you, right? You need to know how much water I splash on you because you're going to report me, okay? However, you can only see the amount of water that's in the bottle you can see that the amount of water in the bottle right before I decide to splash you was 160 milliliters, and then I splash you. And then you can see that when I'm done splashing you, the water in the bottle, there's 70 milliliters. How much water did I splash you with, right? I really want you to actually pause the video, get out a pen, Lord, you don't need a calculator to do this, do you? And just tell me, how much water did I splash on you? Right? Yes, you would take the amount of water that was there at the beginning, 160, and you would subtract the amount of water that's there in the end, 70, and you would be able to document, Tidal splashed 80, 90 milliliters of water on me. All right? Now, my analogy. <laughs> So the volume of water that's there at the beginning, that is how much blood is in the ventricle right before the ventricle starts to contract. And why, what is the moment right before the ventricle starts to contract? That moment is at the end of diastole. At the end of diastole, that's the moment right before the ventricle is about to contract. So the amount of blood in the ventricle, when the ventricle is there at its fullest, that is the end diastolic volume, okay? That's what you started out with, what was it, 160. Okay, the end systolic volume. The end systolic volume is the amount of blood that's left in the ventricle after the ventricle has splashed out its volume of blood, right? And the end systolic volume, that is how much water was left in the water bottle after I splashed you, the end systolic volume. And the amount of blood water that I splashed you with, Lord, I hope I didn't splash you with blood. The amount of water I splashed you with, that's number three, that is analogous to the stroke volume. What is the volume of blood that left from one ventricle in one heartbeat? Since ultrasound will allow the technician to measure this and measure that, then, that technologist can calculate how much blood left in one heartbeat. And that's good to know, 
right? We want to know how well your heart is working. Step one to figuring it out is every time your heart beats, how much blood goes out in one beat. But there's more. Evidently, I was not done. I didn't splash you just once. I just kept splashing you, right? Now, you know how much I splash you with every time I splash you once? Now you need to know how many times did I splash you in a minute? I splashed you 10 times. So how much total water did I splash you with? Right? Please don't tell me you need a calculator to do this, but pause the video, do what you need to do to get the answer. Here it comes. 90 mLs per splash, 10 splashes per minute, 900 mLs per minute. Now, the number of mils per minute, that's going to be analogous to the cardiac output. I needed to start with the stroke volume, the amount ejected from one ventricle in one heartbeat. By the way, what is the stroke volume equal to? The stroke volume is equal to the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume, right? Um, and then I will multiply it times the heart rate, which is the number of beats per minute, and I will get the cardiac output. Interestingly, while you're just hanging out, just watching this video, not doing much else, um, your cardiac output is about four to six liters per minute at rest, and your total blood volume is probably somewhere between four and six liters. That's, that's about average for humans. So pretty much your entire blood volume is going through each ventricle of your heart in an average minute. Now, if you were exercising, your heart would beat faster and your heart would beat harder. Okay, well, a faster heartbeat, that's just a faster heart rate. What does it mean when your heart beats harder? I mean, we felt it, right? Matter of fact, there have been times when something, something suddenly scared you and your heart wasn't beating that much faster, but man, it was beating harder, right? What does it mean when the heart beats harder? Right? We're going to talk about that. In the meantime, I want to make the point that when your heart does beat faster and harder, it increases your cardiac output. And in, with a typical fit person, it can go up to 21 liters per minute. In other words, your heart, when it's working really hard, it can pump about four or five times as much blood per minute as it does when you're just hanging out, not doing anything. If you were a world-class athlete, um, it could uh, be even more than that. So, um, so we know end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. Actually, I'm gonna go back and make an adjustment here. Let me make an adjustment. I want to tell you that this formula can for cardiac output could also be heart rate multiplied times end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. Why? Because this number, end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume, this is the formula for stroke volume, right? We're going to pick this up on the next video.